Hello everyone. Uh, people watching this will probably remember the Y2K uh, situation uh, back in, uh, you know, around the year 2000. Uh, if you don't, look it up. There will be lots of uh, um, totally uh, over-the-top uh, articles on the interwebs about it. Uh, but basically, it was a situation where, because a lot of information systems use two-digit uh, date fields, year fields for dates, uh, when it was going to tick over from 99 to 00, when we went from 1999 to 2000, it was going to break things. Well, uh, there was stuff at the time which was uh, vulnerable to issues as a result of doing that. Although some of the examples I remember hearing at the time were patently ridiculous. Uh, the idea that uh, when it ticked over from 99 to 00, that your bank would foreclose on your mortgage because it hadn't been paid in uh, in uh, 80 years or something like that, which is ridiculous because what it would actually show is that it didn't have to be paid for 80 years, uh, that it was paid up for the next 80 years, right? Because your payment was received, right? Um, but that leaves aside how this, these systems actually worked. Uh, a lot of the critical things that people were worried about failing either didn't care about the calendar date, or they had long since been fixed, or they used a different date uh, storage format which didn't have a Y2K issue. Uh, a lot of the problems came in data entry forms which uh, couldn't handle a uh, year past 1999, uh, they would treat 00 as 1900. Others had long since been modified to use a sliding window for a two-digit entry. So, uh, say 45 would have been, uh, uh, you know, 2045, but uh, 85 would have been 1985. You know, things like that. Uh, it would all depend on the specific usage. Uh, other systems like dealing with vital stats like birth records and stuff likely have been using full year numbers for a very long time, at least since people started fairly, uh, com you know, still rare, but fairly regularly reaching the age of 100. Um, so you couldn't be certain that their birth date was always going to be no more than 100 years before, so you could have had issues as a result of things like that, but it's almost certain that stuff that had to deal with that sort of thing likely already was dealing with it because those, uh, those systems would have to deal with the outliers like people who are 100 years old. Uh, and there are enough people around that any anybody building a a database that assumes that people never get to the age of 100 is an idiot. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of cases where people think that there were two-digit years in place in the data systems. They had long since been replaced with something more sensible just because of practical concerns. And even if they hadn't, there were mechanisms in place for dealing with these types of glitches. Uh, things like bank systems and so on likely had to deal with this Y2K issue decades before the turn of, of the, the calendar uh, just because they deal with things with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 year terms. So uh, a lot of the things that people were worried about, they should have been worried about in 1980 or 1985, not in 1999. And the world didn't end when any of these tick-over points happened. Uh, now, there were a number of things, websites displaying bad dates and things like that. When January 1st, 2000 came along, there were a lot of things that were claiming it was uh, January 1st, 1900. Uh, you know, things like that. But a lot of the Y2K bugs were largely superficial, and they came for during display rather than uh, actual... Uh, operational uh, mechanisms. Uh, but a lot of computer systems don't actually store the date and didn't store the date in the same way that, that we tend to think about it. 
they would store either a count in, in a, of years since a certain epoch, if they bothered to store month, day, and, and, and year, and that epoch was usually 1900 or 1980 or something like that. And that number would be at least 8 bits, which would mean a range of 0 to 255. Or if it's signed, minus 128 to plus 127. So, it was, so these systems would work just fine when the calendar ticked over as long as the stuff relying on the data coming out of them was not doing stupid stuff. But it, that stuff relying on the data doing stupid things is not the fault of the underlying system. That's usually a cosmetic thing displaying a date rather than uh, the actual uh, uh, you know, critical part of the system. Uh, other systems would count some, some, something else, like seconds since January 1st, 1970, or something like that. Which, uh, And that's actually the one that I, I want to talk about today a little more, is the, the Unix Epoch, which is January 1st, 1970, Coordinated Universal Time. Uh, and that is second number zero. And there are issues with this date keeping system because it is defined as you, it's called UTC, but it is defined as having exactly 86,400 seconds in every day, which doesn't take into account leap seconds. So the uh, UTC time on Unix systems is actually out of sync with actual coordinated universal time. But that's not what I want to talk about here. That's due to morons building specs. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. Um, and I've already talked about why I think leap seconds are a bloody stupid idea. So uh, I, I won't go into details there. Now, uh, most systems at the time were, would have been using a 32-bit counter. Now, they wouldn't ever have used, say, a 16-bit counter because that would have overflowed uh, in the space of one year. Uh, it would have overflowed in the space of one day, right? Because 16 bits overflows at just over 65,000. Uh, and there's more than that seconds in a single day. So it would always have been a 32-bit counter minimum. And a lot of systems were 32 bits, uh, and that was the standard thing running up into the end of the 20th century. And a lot of systems today uh, probably still are 32-bit embedded systems and so on. Uh, and that's simply because they don't need the resources memory-wise and so on, and you can make more compact programs in a 32-bit system than you can in a 64-bit system. In a lot of cases, you can make even more compact stuff with even fewer resources using a 16-bit system, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Maybe I, I'll talk about that another time. Uh, but basically, uh, a lot of systems have a 32-bit counter for this Unix epoch time, the systems that use it. Uh, that overflows to negative uh, in a 2's complement 32-bit value goes negative when you get a little bit above 2.1 billion. Uh, and 2.1 billion or so seconds from uh, January 1st, 1970 shows up early in the year 2038. So that's uh, not that uh, far away, but it's not that close either. Uh, and the, the Unix timestamp is usually considered to be signed, and that allows you to represent times and dates before 1970, going back in a 32-bit number to around 1900. Uh, so uh, that uh, that's actually a useful timekeeping mechanism, and this one, as you can see, would not be uh, impacted by Y2K, and it wasn't. Systems using it, the Unix-derived systems and other systems using it, had no problems when the clocks ticked over, uh, and 
most utilities were actually behaving correctly because they used the system call or library stuff correctly and added 1900 to the year number and they displayed the year correctly even. Now, this overflow point, this, uh, this year 2038 problem, uh, if we never change to 64-bit for our standard com computer systems, then there's a good chance that this would have been a very significant uh, issue because then a lot of things would have really behaved badly. Uh, the same sort of problems that you could have when the year ticked from 1999 to 2000, if you're using just two digits for the year, you have the same type of problem, uh, except that it's going to tick backwards to about, uh, uh, what is it, uh, 1902, something like that, thereabout. It'll tick backwards by... Um, 135 years or so. Uh, well, no, 100 and no, it's more than that. Uh, so, 2038, that's uh, 68 years. So, double that, you get. No, it's 136. So, you know, tick back over a century. Well, it's essentially the same problem, right? Uh, and the solutions are in fact the same. Now, why would this be a bigger issue than Y2K? Well, it probably won't. The reason for that is most current systems being used to run uh, run uh, data system, you know, databases and so on are 64-bit systems now, and that's simply because it allows them access to more memory resources and so on. Uh, so those ones, if they're storing their their uh, their counts in a 64-bit number, they won't have an issue until long past the projected heat death of the universe. So uh, it's not going to be an issue for in on at any point that'll be relevant to human history. Humans will be long gone, long before the count overflows on a 64-bit number. Remember that takes that. 38-year uh, or 68-year time window and multiplies it by 4 billion, okay? So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of years. And negative-wise, it, it can represent times all the way back before the beginning of the universe. So we're not likely going to have an issue for anything that actually uses uh, 64 bits. Even stuff that use, decided to use something weird like 48 bits would probably not be an issue. And even 40 bits would give us a long margin for before we had to worry about it. Uh, but there are systems that are using a 32-bit uh, integer field to store this in a database, like on a disk or something. And those systems will have issues. Now they might be treating the number as unsigned, in which case that, bu <clears throat> that buys another 60 odd years, but most of them won't be. And eventually it's still going to overflow. Uh, a lot of systems are not using the timestamp, the Unix timestamp uh, date format to store anything. Uh, they're actually using a uh, a time format that's more human friendly uh, and that uh, and that generally won't have a, a, an issue with uh, with uh, 2038 it may have an issue with another year depending how it's storing it uh, a lot of them they'll have an issue in 2155 because uh, a lot of them use 1900 as their base epoch uh, but that won't be a particularly a big issue either, uh, is by the time 2155 comes around, we'll likely have uh, a pretty easy time migrating the data if we're still using those databases and if uh, we still have a technological civilization by that point in time. Uh, so 
The Unix timestamp will wrap around, uh, will overflow in early in 2038, and we'll have exactly the same potential problems that we had in, uh, we could have had in, at the year 2000. But it's not really, it, it doesn't have uh, an obvious sexy marketing campaign uh, to go with it. Uh, and uh, as a result, this one might actually catch us out because it's not going to get mind share and people aren't going to understand it because it's very technical in nature why it's an issue. Uh, even a lot of technical people don't understand it. They don't even know about it. Uh, but it's an issue and we know about it. I know that, uh, say, the base level operating systems, uh, Linux and so on, have basically solved it. Uh, I think even on 32-bit systems, Linux is using a 64-bit internal counter at the very least, and there's a system call that returns it, I think. And if there isn't, it'd be foolish. Uh, and I think uh, most other systems likely have done the same thing. Now, anyone running uh, old uh, versions of uh, systems uh, past the year 2038 will have issues with the date, uh, but that's unavoidable. If you're going to use something that's been unpatched in 70 years, well, you kind of deserve what you get, and you should know that you're going to have issues. That said, most of these systems will work just fine. They'll just have the wrong notion of what today's date is. So, yeah, probably not a big issue. Uh, you, you know, there were issues like computer BIOSes and so on, like in the uh, uh, computers, uh, the uh, firmware. Uh, it, uh, during Y2K, some of them wouldn't handle uh, the year ticking over past uh, uh, 1999. They would actually return 1900. Um, so, you know, there were issues, uh, and there will be issues with, uh, with that sort of thing uh, when... The 2038 rolls around, but most of these will be largely cosmetic. They won't cause significant issues, I don't think. But there, I think there's actually a bigger chance of real issues when 2038 comes around than we actually had in 2000. And that is because the specific nature of the problem is harder to understand because it relies on understanding binary and how Unix timestamps work and most people don't even know what a Unix is let alone a Unix timestamp. But it's not the only rollover point that could potentially cause issues. Um, there are rollover points that show up all over the place. Uh, and I think 2020 is one that uh, might have uh, a few things uh, behave a little bit odd. I don't think anything that's basically current will, but some older systems might misbehave when that rolls around. Uh, and there's probably other cut points where, uh, where things will uh, behave squirrely. Uh, but I, I would hope that the people operating systems that have these types of, uh, of um, uh, I guess, um, limits, uh, I would hope that they know about them and will and are actually going actively looking at a way to deal with them and prevent them from causing issues. At the very least, the people in the at the building the operating systems and so on in the Unix world do know about the 2038 problem and have known about it for a long time. There was discussion about it in the 1990s uh, when Y2K was looming uh, because. You know, all of the Unix people were sitting there nice and smug that they weren't going to have Y2K issues or, or serious ones because their operating system didn't tick over until 2038. Uh, but 2038's getting closer. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's 2017 now. 2038 is 21 years from now. And it will come and uh, no doubt there will be something that was forgotten we'll get some weird behavior and something will tell us that it's 1902 or something like that uh, but i i fully expect that at the very least the underlying operating systems will handle it just fine uh, 
I know there's been a lot of work on timekeeping in a lot of operating systems with leap seconds lately uh, because that has caused no end to trouble. Um, so uh, one would hope that other potential timekeeping disasters are being looked at and being dealt with in software and operating systems, but time will tell. Um, as I said before, uh, I actually think that there's a better chance we'll have real significant issues show up during uh, the early part of 2038 uh, versus uh, what happened with the year 2000 because there's no obvious cool marketing campaign to whip the masses up into a frenzy and get uh, exposure on the uh, potential issue. So a lot of places are not going to be checking their software and there will be a scramble to fix it when people discover things stop working. Um, we're not gonna have Y2K auditors, uh, you know, year 2038 auditors uh, wandering around uh, making uh, uh, wheelbarrow fulls of money, checking systems to make sure they're Y2K compliant, um, but for 2038. Uh, because it's not going to have the mind share. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will get the uh, the press when it's looming. Uh, but I really don't think it will. And hopefully that will be because there really isn't going to be a problem. But I expect there will be a lot more people get caught out by it than got caught out by Y2K. Anyway, that's probably enough rambling on that topic, because uh, uh, it's pretty clear that that's what I've fallen into at this point. So uh, I guess uh, that's all for, for now. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike uh, as you see fit. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.